So back in section nine, we looked at three of uh, Java's list types. That was the list interface, the array, uh, the array list, and also the linked list classes. Now those form part of the Java collections framework, and that framework also includes things like sets, maps, trees, and queues. So at the top level of the collections framework is the collections class. Now this exposes static methods that uh, either operate on collections, such as the sort method that we've used previously, or they also return collections objects, such as the list method. Now the interfaces in the collection framework, what they do is they allow the framework to be extended. And uh, they actually define methods for all the fundamental operations that uh, really are required for the various collection types. Now one of the design goals of the collections framework was that there should be good interoperability amongst various collections. So not just the ones included in the framework, but uh, literally anything that may also be created in the future that is a reasonable representation of a collection. Now that also includes arrays. Now arrays themselves couldn't be made part of the collection framework without changing the Java language. However, the framework does include methods that enable collections to be moved into arrays and vice versa, and additionally methods to allow arrays to be viewed as collections. So the main components or the core elements of the collections framework are interfaces. Now these are the abstract types that represent collections, including the list interface that uh, we've already seen as mentioned previously. And we will be looking at the interface hierarchy of the collections framework. Also included is aggregate operations. Now although we've seen iterators in earlier videos, we'll cover them in much more detail here in this section. Uh, in addition, another core element is implementations. Now, this is the concrete implementations of the interface, including uh, the array list and linked list classes. That's two good examples of a, an implementation. But also algorithms. Now the Java JDK provides a range of polymorphic algorithms that work on collections objects, technically speaking on objects that implement the collection interface, and uh, they provide reusable functionality. So I'll be looking at all these elements in this section, although I'll do so by working with the framework rather than producing a video on each element. So to start with, what I'm going to do is review the array list and linked list objects as well as the list interface that we've covered uh, previously and consider them within the context of the collections framework. What I'll do is use a simple seat booking system in theatre to see how these classes that uh, we've used earlier fit into the Java collections framework. So theater seats will be numbered with a row letter and then a seat number within each row. I'll keep it simple and not have different numbers of seats in the stalls and that type of thing. So we're going to start off by creating our theater class and that's going to contain an inner seat class. So we're going to go over as always and uh, go into our package, right click it, new class and we'll call this first one theater. And we're going to start by creating a list for the seats. So that's what we'll do first is we'll add the name. So it's going to be private final string theater name. Then we're going to create a private list of seat objects. So list seat of seats. And seats we're going to define shortly. That's going to be an inner class. And make that a new array list. Like so. And incidentally, that error on the first line is going to go away uh, once we uh, initialize it. And uh, if you were paying attention and watching the section, uh, previous section where I talked about final and so forth, you'll understand why that error is coming up and that it will be fixed once we uh, uh, update our constructor. And we're getting this error here most likely because the, the this is weird. I think it's a bug in IntelliJ. For some reason, even though I've selected uh, project structure a project language level eight in my default settings, it's set it to six. So if I go back now and change that to eight, the error should go away. And obviously we still need to define that uh, uh, inner class, which we'll be doing shortly. So moving on, let's create a constructor. So the constructor is going to consist of theater. So once I do that, that should fix that other error. You can see that error's gone away now because we've now initialized that uh, our object. And we're going to have a couple of other parameters. Let's also have the number of rows in this theater, int num rows, and int seats per row. And then what we're going to do is we're going to allocate, as I mentioned, there's going to be a seat uh, number, consists of a row letter and a seat number. Well, theater, theater seats will be numbered with a row letter and a seat number, I should say. So first, first of all, we're going to create the last row. So we do int last row equals a 
plus number rows take one then what we're going to do is cycle through and create a seat for each one of these uh, theatre seats so we're going to do four char row equals a a row is less than or equal to last row row plus plus so it's going through all the rows from A to Z effectively. Okay, then for each, uh, we've got the row, then for each row we now need to go through and allocate the seats for that section. So we need to put four int seat num. Seat num starting on one, because obviously we can't have a seat uh, starting with zero. And a seat num needs to be less than or equal to seats per row, which again was passed to the constructor and seat num plus plus to increment through each seat in the row then we're going to create a seat object row plus string format so the, oops we lowercase row the row that we've defined that we're currently processing plus string dot format that's going to be percent o2d seat num so we're formatting it so it looks correct seat num and then we're going to add it to our array list that uh We've defined on line 10. So seats.add seat. There's a basic constructor as you can see that's uh, cr created now. And before we fix this seat error up, we'll just uh, create a few other things. What we'll do is we'll first we'll add a, uh, a getter for our theater name. So we're just adding the getter there. And actually, I'll move that below the constructor is probably a better spot for that. Clean the code up a bit and put it there. And the next one we want. What we'll do is we'll create a few more. We'll create uh, a reserve seat where it does just as you think it would. It reserves a particular seat for our theater. And we'll also add a get seats where we can re return or print out the list of seats. And we'll do the reserve seat first. And that's going to be public boolean reserve seat string seat number. And we start off with seat requested seat is equal to null for seat in seats so we're going to go through all the seats and we're going to do a test to see whether we can find our particular one seat dot get seat number number dot equals seat number requested seat equals seat and then we'll break out of it because we've found the seat then outside of that loop we're going to put if requested seat is equal to null we're going to put there is no seat seat number in case there's been an invalid seat sent to this method effectively return false in that situation there's no other processing we can do because we've got an invalid seat otherwise what we're going to do is return requested seat seat dot reserve and again we haven't written the seat class yet that will all be revealed once we get to that so that's how we go about reserving a seat and then the last method we're going to or the next method we're going to create is the get seats which is just really for testing purposes and it's going to be public void get seats and we're just going to go for seat, seat, seats. And print them out. So it'll be, it'll be seat dot get seat number. Like so. Okay, so that's the basic uh, code for the theatre. What we'll do now is we'll add our private class which has got some of these other functions and will fix up a lot of these errors that are showing on the screen. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So private class seat. And it's going to have a private final string seat number. And we'll get an error until we initialize that. Private boolean reserved equals false. Obviously, we want to indicate whether this particular seat uh, has been reserved or not. So we'll do our constructor now. And we're just going to get the seat numbers passed to this method. And you can see we've now set that. 
and fix the error that was showing on line 53. And that's all our constructor needs to do. And next we need to fix up some of these. Requested seat, that should be. Requested seat. So we need to basically, uh, we just need to import this error. And probably the easiest way of doing that would just be to put a star there. That fixes that. We could have done a Java util like list and just imported like that. That fixes that and fixes up some of these other ones. So we've still got the couple other things to fix here. Just typos. We've got the get seat number method and the reserve method that still need to be written in this uh, inner class. So I'll do that. First, we'll do the reserve. So I'm going to do a public boolean reserve. And the code for that will be if not this.reserved. This dot reserved equals true. So obviously if it's already reserved, we're not going to retry and process it. And if that's the case, we were able to reserve it. We're just going to put a message to the effect seat plus seat number plus reserved. And then return true. Our job is done in that case. If it gets down to here, well, actually what we'll do is we'll put an else in there. We'll put else return false because obviously there was a problem reserving it because it was already reserved. We also want a cancel function. We haven't used that code yet, but we want that. So public boolean cancel. And it does things the other way around. It goes if this.reserved, so then it tries to cancel if, if the uh, um, seat num has already been reserved, or this particular seat has been reserved. So if this.reserved, then we put this.reserved is equal to false. So we're going to unreserve it, free it up so it can be allocated again. And reservation of seat plus seat number cancelled. Return true because we successfully cancelled. Else, return false. We weren't able to cancel because the seat uh, wasn't was already reserved. Then the last one to fix up is this get seat number, which is just a getter, so we're just going to do a getter for the seat number. We should fix that. And that should be all the errors that are now fixed uh, in this class, in our first theater class with the inner class of being seat. And again, just as a recap, looking back up here at the top, the constructor takes the theater name together with the number of rows and the number of seats per row, and it uses these to create seats, which it currently stores, as you can see, in the array list on line 10, which is this. Uh, the seats field. And you can see that uh, we've defined a couple of other methods as well, the reserve seat, and also we've uh, created an inner class for seat and got the ability to reserve or cancel uh, a particular seat. So let's go ahead now and uh, create the main method. And that's just gonna create a new theater and then attempt to reserve the same seat twice just to confirm that things are working. So we'll go back to our main, and here we're going to create a new reference. So it's gonna be theater. equals new theater, we'll call it the Olympian. And again, the parameters here, you go back and just to confirm those, the parameters we're looking for here is the number of rows in available in the theater and then the seats per row. So we're gonna start with eight, so eight rows and 12 seats per row. Then we'll do a theater.getSeat, so we'll call that method just to print it out to see that it's working. So let's try running that first. And you can see that uh, we've got our various seats there, starting from row A, A01 to 012, and we use that uh, formatting class, which I mentioned here, strings.format, to make sure they're all allocated with a leading zero if necessary. And we've gone from row A to row H. And of course, that's a total of eight rows. So that part's working okay, which is good. So let's go back to our main. So let's now try doing a reservation. So we put something like, if theater dot Reserve seat H11. Please pay. The seat's been reserved. Uh, else sorry, seat is already or seat is taken. So the first time we run this, this should work. We run this. Seat H11 reserved. So you can see that's working fine. There's an extra space there that I could probably look at fixing that. I think I must have added two spaces there, so I'll fix that. And go back and run it again just to confirm. Okay, seat H11 reserved. Now if we do try and do the same thing again, if I just copy and paste the same code, 
we should get an error the second time because, of course, the previous call to it should have reserved the seed. So let's just try running that. Sorry, seed is taken. So the first time it reserved it, and the second time you can see that the seed's taken. So that's good. That's working fine. And the other thing we'll do now is we'll comment out uh, line 7 because we can confirm that the code's working all right and the seats are being created uh, correctly. So I'll comment that out. So I'm going to pause the video now, and uh, in the next video we'll continue on. And we're going to look at changing our data structure, which is defined uh, in theatre.java on line 10, the seats using the array list. We're going to start changing that to a few different uh, formats, the list, and then also look at changing it to a collection by making it more generic and seeing how that all works. So see you in that next video.